Hey guys, it's 2F0T, and today I'm going to show you how to type on a laptop. And the laptop that I've chosen to use for this demonstration is the best laptop, in my opinion, the 2011 13-inch MacBook Pro. I don't know what he's talking about, guys, because the 2016 MacBook Pro really is the evolution of the MacBook and probably the best MacBook that it was ever made. It has a touch bar that gives you functionality across multiple apps. It has a Touch ID sensor for improved security, and it is lighter and thinner than what we had in 2011. So I really don't know what he's talking about. The 2016 is literally known as the worst MacBook Pro ever made. The Touch Bar is not used by any developers. It has no ports that anybody can use. And the 2011 is literally more productive, more capable than what you're using. It still stands the test of time. It can still run everything that yours can, maybe not as fast, but it can still do it all. Guys, neither of you are wrong. Both of those machines were great in their own time, but the true king is the 2022 M2 Pro MacBook Pro 14 inch. This is the machine that we're going to be doing our typing demonstration on. So sit tight, strap in, and let's get to it. But before we do, if you've been following along on the channel, if you've seen my previous videos, or even if you're new to the channel, I'm trying to make each video better. So please like, subscribe, and share what you're seeing so that I can continue to make more content and show you guys how someone with two fingers and zero toes does the things that I do, the tech that I love to use, the cars that I love to drive, and just the tips and things that I've established to get through in my day to day. So if you could subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. What I'd like to do today is not just show you how I type on this 14 inch MacBook Pro, but I'm gonna do the same on both of the other Macs as well to show, you know, kind of what the difference has been over time, which of them are the most comfortable for me, and what's gone into the decisions that I've made, not just in typing, but in using each of them over the years to make the change from one to the next. Because as you can see, having three laptops, or really only two, over the course of the last 13 years is pretty good. And I only recently got this M2 Pro MacBook Pro because I wanted to give Apple Silicon a try. And you know, as I've been making more and more videos, it is gonna just really enhance the overall performance. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So I thought for our comparisons that we'd start and go from oldest to newest. And the 2011 MacBook Pro is a pretty compact device. It weighs about 4.5 pounds. 4.5 pounds, it's not. It's not light, but it's and it's also thick, so it it's not the easiest to carry around. I definitely can't do it with one hand, um, but I can carry it with two. It's a, a bit of a workout, you know, kind of like doing curls. One of my favorite features about the 2011 MacBook Pro is that it has a magnetic charging cable, which I can fairly easily connect with just one hand. Although it does block the Ethernet port when it's plugged in, it has a an older Thunderbolt port. It's got two USB A's. It has uh, an SD memory card slot, a headphone jack, and then on the other side, it has an optical disk drive and a lock for if you want to connect it. Uh, it opens up pretty nicely. Um, it, I have to use two hands on either side. I can also hold it with one side and put my finger in this little lip and lift it open. To use the MacBook Pro, I'm able to use the touchpad and just kind of slide my finger around. I have enabled tap to click, so I don't have to push the touchpad all the way down. For our typing demonstration, we're gonna type the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, which has every letter in the English alphabet. I am able to type without looking at the keys, so I'm really just gonna be looking at the sentence itself and using my iPhone timer to time it because the Type the Alphabet app doesn't work on this laptop anymore. So let's get to it. Not even eight seconds. Not too bad. Now, as you can see, I did have to kind of hunch over the laptop a little bit. Um, I do have to reach. As you can see, my fingers can't really reach too, too far beyond uh, the end of the laptop. 
So uh, that is definitely something that I take into consideration when, when typing. It does put a little bit of a strain on my back. Um, so I try to position myself in such a way that uh, it doesn't put a strain. And I look forward to kind of showing you what that's going to look like when I'm using the other laptops as well. All right, so now let's move on to the 2016 16-inch MacBook Pro. And they really changed it up with the, the, the MacBook Pro in 2016 by removing the magnetic charging port, which I was really sad about. And they replaced all the ports with just four USB-Cs. And they left the headphone jack. Uh, so no more CD drive, no more USB-A ports. Um, and it kind of requires you to now use this dongle or, you know, whichever one you want that adds back SD card slots. Um, USB-A and HDMI. One thing that Apple added to the 2016 MacBook Pro, which I really like actually, is the touch bar. Um, gives you a lot of options right at your fingertips. They did remove the function road to do it, but you can, you know, increase, decrease the brightness. You have a cool uh, volume slider. You can increase and decrease the volume with it. Uh, if you're in Final Cut Pro, you can scrub through your timeline. So I, I actually really like the touch bar. Um, I'm kind of sad that it didn't last uh, beyond this generation, um, but hopefully we see something like it come back in the future. So now onto the typing demonstration. We can actually use the entire Type the Alphabet app on this MacBook Pro. So let's see how quick the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Six point six seconds. Um, I like the the keyboard. Um, I, I don't hate it as much as everybody else did. Um, it's it is very flat, so you don't kind of get that feedback that you do on the thirteen inch and the fourteen inch. Um, and I have found that some of the keys get stuck a little bit. So I do see why they replaced it, but I wasn't a, a huge hater. Now moving on to actually manipulating the 2016 MacBook Pro with, you know, with just two fingers. It is uh, about two thirds of an inch thick when completely closed. Uh, it is 14 inches wide, so definitely wider, and is about 9.68 inches deep. Um, holding it and in terms of weight it is 4.66 pounds so it is heavier than the 13 inch understandably it's got a three inch bigger screen um, it does require two hands to hold it um, and one thing that I'll note is the edges on it are really sharp so you know without fingers that you can kind of reach into the laptop and and grab it and having to touch the edges it is kind of awkward and difficult to hold. So, you know, I have found myself having to, you know, kind of hold it underneath it. Holding it from the edges does kind of gouge into my hands a bit. So I'm, I am not a big fan of that. That was really one of the big reasons why I wanted to move away from this laptop. Um, but the, you know, one of the bigger reasons was I really wanted to go back to a magnetic port um, and I just needed more performance. So now let's move on to the 14 inch and see how that's doing for me. It does return one of my favorite features of the older Macs, which is MagSafe, and it's actually nice and tight and secure. But if you do need to remove it, you can. And if you need to put it in with, with just uh, one hand, you can as well. Um, it has two USB ports on the side headphone jack, another USB-C port on the side with an HDMI port and an SD card slot. So if you do want to plug in any legacy peripherals, you'd have to use the same dongle, but at least you have HDMI um, and SD. To open it, um, you, just, you can either put your hand in this little lip or you can grab it from the sides. Thankfully, one of the things that I really disliked about the 2016 MacBook Pro is the sharp edges. These are nice and rounded, so I have no problem grabbing it. Uh, in terms of its dimensions, it is 0.61 inches thick, so it's a little bit thinner, 12.3 inches wide, and 
8.7 inches deep. So it's definitely uh, about somewhere in the middle between the 2011 and the 2016 in terms of size. And it weighs the least of all of them at 3.5 pounds. So it's nice and light. So I can you know, hold it. It's not as uh, labor intensive to, to pick it up and move it around. So looking in the, the new MacBook Pro, um, I really like this black background behind the letters. Uh, it makes it look really sleek. Um, we do lose the touch bar, get our function row back, um, but we do still have a touch ID sensor for logging in. And I'm really happy that touch ID works with, you know, my single finger. Now let's see how our typing demonstration goes on the new MacBook. See if it's any easier, any faster. Six point six seconds. Typing is definitely a bit more easy, a little bit more responsive than on the 2016 MacBook Pro. Uh, I, I'm a little bit closer to the keyboard. I was a little bit further away on the 2016. Uh, the keys are more responsive. They have a little bit more, a little bit more travel to them than they did before. And overall, though, you know, typing is pretty good. It's pretty comfortable. Uh, I do like the the feel of this laptop much more now. It's definitely more responsive than the previous laptops that I had, uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, getting a lot of good use out of it. So I hope that this demonstration has shown you a little bit about how I type and how I use these computers and um, the changes that I've seen over the years and how it's you know kind of impacted my overall comfort and usability of each of them. Uh, definitely uh, follow along as I continue to look at different types of tech and the different uses for it as someone with limited mobility. As always, please like, subscribe, and share.